What's going on everybody and welcome to a JavaScript basic tutorial series. What we're not going to be doing in this tutorial series is covering concept after concept with toy example after toy example because by the end of it you'll have forgotten 75% of it uh, and I just don't see the point. So what we're going to be doing is actually building something the entire time and then just kind of learning along the way. So I'll do my best to explain everything but uh, if I make a mistake or I didn't explain something clearly enough, feel free to comment below. Also, if you've got nothing to say, you might still want to check them out because chances are I've made some mistakes and someone might have corrected me. So I am by no means a JavaScript expert. I have been uh, professionally copying and pasting JavaScript for quite a few years now and I'm really just trying to learn it more. So that's part of why I'm doing the video. So yeah, feel free to uh, tell me why I'm stupid and or uh, learn some JavaScript with me. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. It's actually pretty simple to program with JavaScript. You really just need two things. You need an editor and you need a browser. I hope you have an, uh, I hope you have a browser by now. <laughs> and uh, if you don't have an editor, I'm going to be using an editor called Sublime Text. Uh, and if you want to use that, awesome. If you want to use some other different editor, awesome. Just understand no matter what editor you choose, there will be hordes of people to tell you uh, you've made the wrong choice and that their editor is better for reasons X, Y, Z. Personally, I just like really simple editors, but different people have different desires with their editors. So try a bunch, use whatever you like. With that, let's get into it. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just open terminal, run sublime text. And I'm going to save this as jstutorial.html. And I actually want to save that to my desktop. Awesome. So for now, we're just going to throw the JavaScript into a really simple HTML document. Eventually, you're going to separate these things out. And we'll probably end up doing that in this tutorial. But right now, it's so simple. We're just going to put it on the same page. If you don't know HTML, welcome to an HTML tutorial. Uh, these are opening tags. These are closing tags. You can tell it because it's got a slash. So that's our HTML, and our HTML, as you might guess, goes in between the tags. So then we're gonna have some body tags. This is where the content of your web page goes. So content here. Now uh, in Sublime, I just have a quick little shortcut that I can hit and it opens it in a browser. If you wanna set up your Sublime text that exact way, check the link in the description for the text-based version of this tutorial. I put the instructions there. Do take note, there are other browsers though that do this, ex or other editors that do this exact same thing. Uh, and some of them, you might even think do it better. Like some of them will run this, like a server that every time you save it updates the code and does fancy stuff. So feel free, check them all out. I get it. Your editor is better than mine. I, I'm fine. So, so anyway, um, so the content goes there, but th we're not doing HTML and so we're doing JavaScript. So we're actually, the content is just going to be a couple of script tags. Now, if you're in school, you might have an instructor that really wants you to put text or type equals text JavaScript, not necessary anymore with HTML5, which is what everybody's using by now. So don't worry about it, but um, just know sometimes people might think you should put that in there. So <laughs> I'm not going to do it. So just take note that I'm not doing it, but that's a thing. So in here's where your JavaScript goes. Um, the, we don't know anything about JavaScript, so no matter what I throw at you, you're going to be slightly confused. But uh, there's a few, quite a few, built-in functions So and just built-in things. If you just type built-in JavaScript, um, what is it, MDN or something like that, there's just this, you can see this huge list. So let's try built-in JavaScript MDN. Right. So check this out. These are all your built-in objects. It's a huge freaking list. These are things that are just there all the time. <laughs> so things like math and dates, stuff and all that, they're just there and you can use them. Uh, so anyways, uh, one of the things that's there is alert. It is everybody's, honestly, everybody just loves it when you have alerts on your web page. I know alert is maybe my favorite thing to ever run into. Hey, why are you leaving? So, <laughs> for example, um, here's just a really quick alert. Uh, let's check it out. It's just a, like a pop-up notification, basically. So a lot of times you try to leave a website, you might see something like this. Um, sometimes it's useful if it's like, if you have a website like a blog or you know maybe an email site or something where if you leave, you're literally gonna lose a thing that you've been working on. So you might've misclicked or something. And so you might have a little pop-up that's like, hey, are you sure? But um, otherwise, you can just throw it at people who are trying to bounce off your site and people will just love it. So, so anyway, um, alert. Awesome. 
Um, you can also use JavaScript to write directly to, you know, like, as HTML. So, for example, we can use document.write. Now, um, this is like a little challenging. You see this all the time in, in intro tutorials, so I guess I feel okay throwing it in. But document is an object, write is a method, and these parentheses here encase parameters. So you could just point to the method, but you can actually run the method with parentheses. So you, sometimes you might see methods that are just empty parentheses because there's no need for parameters. In this case, it does take a parameter, and it's what you actually want to write. So we're going to pass a string parameter, and it's a string because it has quotations. And so we can just say, hey there, right? So we can document write. Now, document is an object, and it's in reference to the actual document object itself, the, the actual thing the person is seeing in the browser, basically. So let's go ahead and run that real quick. And we see, hey there. So it's just been written there. Now, this can actually be pure HTML. So we can actually throw like some strong tags around this. So that should bold it strong. Run that again, and we get nice bold hey there. So pretty cool. Also, in <laughs> JavaScript, you kind of want to end all your lines with semicolons. Um, I'm going to forget them all the time, but they should be there. Anyway, like I said, I'm a noob. I'm also uh, mainly a Python programmer, so yeah, we don't have semicolons. Anyway, uh, OK, cool. So we can document, right? We've also seen the alert. Uh, the other thing that's kind of neat is you have console. So you can console.log. And then you can put a string, thing here, thing here of note. Uh, we can save that, run that in a browser. And usually I want to say it was an F12. Yeah. Uh, we can come over to the console and we can see thing here of note. And also a little notification that we didn't specify the, the character set. That's okay. I'm not going to worry about that for now. Um, anybody who's using a browser that can't figure it out, um, I don't want using my sites. So, <laughs> so uh, for now, maybe later I'll reference that for sure. But anyways, <laughs> for now I'm not worried. So thing here of note, it just logs to console. So generally if you want to do like debugging, you'll use the console for this. So another thing, you can console.log, uh, you can thing here of note, um, you can log warn and error. Um, and I'll just do all three. Normally I would change the string, but I don't feel like wasting the time on that. Uh, so come on over here. So thing here of note. So it's like a nice yellow warning. I can scroll in a little bit, but hopefully you can see that. Actually, I can't make that any bigger. I can make the web page bigger, but I can't really make this bigger. Sorry, guys. Um, but you should be able to see that. And then thing here of note. And then usually you can come here and you can figure out where that's coming from exactly in the code just by like clicking on it. So later, you might have code that has actual debugging and then you could go and see exactly where something failed. But enough of that. What we actually want to do is build towards a thing. And that's a game in the browser. So the first thing we have to understand is how to actually use JavaScript to manipulate an existing thing. So one example that I think is really simple is like an input. So if you had an input ID, I'm going to say the ID is mod me. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to try to camel case everything, but I'm just not used to doing that. But that's a standard in JavaScript. Anyway, mod me ID, um, input ID, mod me, and then uh, we can say type equals text. And then we could put a value in here and we could just say starting. Okay, so we could run this. And what we get is a little input field and it says starting, but we could change that as a user to like whatever we want. But we can also change that with JavaScript. So you can change it based on clicks, mouse movements, time elapsed, or you can just immediately change it. So for now, we're just going to immediately change it. And we're going to say uh, document.getElementById. And again, we're referencing the you know document object. So we're referencing this like HTML stuff, the stuff the browser's seeing. And then we're going to get that element from the browser with the ID of mod me. So I'm just going to pass that as a string. And then we're just going to change the value. So one way we can do that is just dot value. And we can just say equals something else. And don't forget your final semicolon there. And now let's go ahead and run that. And we see that actually it's already been changed like instantly because the script ran and boom, it got changed. 
So, uh, so that's how you could uh, modify a certain property in here. But some of the other cool things that you can do, like for example, is you might have, for example, let's say a paragraph tag. And in here, we've got yet again, some starting text. Now it doesn't have to be a paragraph tag. This could be literally any tag in existence. And, but we're gonna say ID equals, we'll do the mod me again. And now it has starting text. Now, if we change dot value, let's just go ahead and run that real quick. We can see nothing changed, right? Because value isn't the thing we're actually trying to change. Like, we, there's really no, that's not gonna actually change the text. We actually were kind of hoping that we could change the text. So instead what we would say is dot inner HTML. Now that means exactly what it says. You're gonna actually change the HTML between here. So it could be something else. You could actually throw in more HTML. Paragraph tags don't have to be paragraph tags. It could actually be a div tag for that matter. And you could actually be passing more div tags and many, uh, many paragraph tags. So anyway, let's just check that out. So now it actually gets changed to something else. So that's how you can start modifying the, the stuff that's in there. But instead, what we actually wanna work with uh, to make a game is a canvas object. And that's exactly what it sounds like. It's a place where we can actually draw to. So let's do a really simple drawing and then I'm gonna close out this tutorial and we'll pick up with the next one. So uh, the first thing that we're gonna do here is we're just going to say canvas and we're going to say ID equals my canvas and then uh, what we need to do is specify the width, that will be 200 pixels. We'll specify the height also as 200 pixels. And then we're gonna say the style equals, and then we're going to say the border colon is one pixel. It is going to be solid, and its color will be hashtag 000 for black. So, um, so yeah, so if any of this doesn't make sense, like that was pretty much, uh, I guess this is just some simple styling. Uh, and then these are just some properties of this canvas. Super basic, hopefully you understand that. If you don't, again, you, you can definitely go and look for like some sort of HTML tutorial or something. You honestly should be able to learn all this stuff in like 20 minutes or something. But also feel free to, to leave a comment below. I just don't wanna to spend too long on HTML stuff because that's not really what this tutorial is. Okay, so we have a, a lovely canvas. I'm gonna clear out our script now and let's just check out our canvas. Sure enough, nice, very nice box, nice clean canvas. And we'll draw to it because I feel like that would be dirty of me to just leave you guys with a nice empty canvas. So now historically, uh, JavaScript has always referenced things with you know, variables. But first I wanna talk about why do we even wanna use variables? <laughs> and then I'm gonna talk about things that have changed. So first of all, why might we wanna use variables? Well, to draw to the canvas, let me show you what's required. So to, first we need to access the canvas. So we're gonna, just gonna use document.getElementById. If you used mine, that would autocomplete. Okay, so anyway, um, I'm sure there is, there's gotta be, most editors probably would autocomplete that. It's a good point. Also. Stop that. Okay, so we're gonna get uh, my canvas. So that's how we're going to, okay, now we've referenced, um, now we've referenced uh, my canvas. And now the next thing is, I guess that was my phone. I don't know. Pro that sounds like, uh, cool. Anyway, I live in a high tornado area. And so I have a alert app that tells me when there's tornadoes. So, <laughs> Kind of need to finish the tutorial. So document .get element. <laughs> I'm going to be fine. Um, okay, so this is how we reference uh, the canvas. Now, what we want to do is we actually want to draw to the canvas. Now, to do that, we have to actually reference the canvas's, the context of the canvas. So actually, we want to say dot get uh, context. context. I'm going to type that a few times. And we're going to say 2D. And uh, there's other contexts you could do uh, uh, like WebGL and stuff. You can get really fancy, but for now it's just gonna be a simple 2D object, just X, Y. And that's, that's just to reference the context. Now what we wanna do is the first thing would be uh, we wanna begin a path. And that just kinda starts fresh, starts or restarts a drawing path. Okay, so that's just to start the path. Then the next thing we're gonna do, right, would be, um, to, 
um, we would we begin the path, then we would move to, and then we would draw, and all this stuff. Anyway, that would be really messy. Plus, we got a ton of repetition here. Every time, we're just trying to reference basically up to the context. So instead, we might we would we would use things called variables. So you might say var canvas equals. I shouldn't have done that, but anyway, I shouldn't have deleted that stuff. Document type uh, get element by ID. Uh, oh, actually, it's my canvas. Uh, and then you would have var uh, context equals canvas dot get context. So now we can reference both the uh, canvas and the context of that canvas. But very or var isn't really uh, the most up to date way to do this. So actually, there's var let and uh, const and chances are like most of the time you should just default to const and then I would use let for when that variable might actually change. But it can be kind of confusing, but a constant is just the assignment never actually changes. So it's not that the thing that it's assigned to never changes, it's the assignment. So canvas, is canvas always going to reference the document get uh, element by ID my canvas? Yeah, the canvas might change. But it, but this 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 actual you know this is our nice assignment operator. <laughs> if this uh, pointer is always going to be to this thing, then rather than being a variable or let, what we actually want to call this is a constant. It's not changing. <laughs> the thing itself can change, um, but the actual the the assignment won't change. So like later we can't say canvas equals two. We can't do that. <laughs> okay. So but with a variable or let we could reassign the value. But we're not actually going to be doing that in either of these cases. So both of these should be just constant. So that's how we're going to reference the canvas in the context. Now let's actually draw to this bad boy. So first we're going to say context dot begin path. And again, this either this either starts or restarts a path. Then what we want to say is context dot move to and then we'll just say 10, 10. Now, what's happened is you, at begin path, you've picked up your pencil, right? It's off of the paper. It's off the canvas, let's say. And now you've moved to these coordinates, but you're not drawing anything yet. Then, so now you're kind of at that coordinate. You're holding your mouse above the, the paper at that. And then we're going to say context.line2. And then we're going to say 50, 25. Now, you might think you've moved the pencil at this point, but if we check it out, you haven't. What gives? Well, actually, you haven't moved the pencil. All you did was actually look. You just kind of looked to, to the 5025. You haven't done anything yet. Instead, what you need to do is context.stroke. Now you've done it. And now we can run that. And oh my gosh, we are artists. Beautiful. So, so. Um, yeah, so I'm going to stop here. We've covered a lot of things. We've covered objects and methods and variables, let constant, um, referencing, uh, elements by ID and probably a bunch of other stuff. I can't think of off the top of my head, but we've covered a lot of stuff. Thanks to my recent channel members. Thank you guys very much for your support. If you want to support the channel, you can click that beautiful blue button below the video that says join. Uh, we've got Dracoducks back after a, a month, Sanscar, a brand new member, Dixon Craig back after a month, Ivan for two months on his third month, Digier, and Uma Kanth back for another month. Thank you guys so much for your support. I love doing what I do, and you guys are making it possible, so thank you so much. So in the next video, what we're going to do is uh, continue drawing onto the canvas and kind of start moving towards drawing something of substance. Uh, we've got a few more little uh, things to talk about specific to the canvas, and then we can start getting into more interesting things like functions and loops and stuff like that. So uh, stay tuned. If you got questions, comments, concerns, you think I did something wrong, stupid, I could do it better, feel free to leave them below. If you're curious about the things I did wrong, stupid, or could do better, check the comments down below. Um, otherwise, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.